Hi friends, I am Asmitha. Welcome to my channel. Kendra Brill, a transgender woman from Strasbourg. She was born as a male William Joseph Brill. She has published her story as a book titled Becoming Me. Her story follows a transgender woman's journey through the prison and court system to become the woman she is today. She is now 42 years old and she started this at 33, but she knew she was a female at the age of 3. Her friends and family know her as Kendra, but when her name is called during her many appearances in court, she is William Brill and that's when the humiliation starts. As a result of drunk driving and shoplifting charges, she spent three years in the correction system. In jail, she's been asked whether she still has a penis. I was relieved, Brill recalled. It was good to know what the underlying issue was, the reasons why I was drinking and using drugs as badly as I was at the time. Brill sees a link between her struggle to clarify her sexual identity and the excessive drinking that has led to multiple jail and prison sentences. Brill has been arrested twice since her release from Indian Creek, both times for shoplifting beer. She was convicted the first time and jailed at the Northwest Regional Adult Detention Center in Winchester. I think if society were a little more accepting and didn't fear the unknown, which is the normal thing, then maybe I wouldn't have the social stigma I have and the fear that I have, Brill said. I would be a little more productive member of society and wouldn't have to use alcohol to numb the pain. William Wilson, the superintendent of the RSW jail, said placement of transgender prisoners can get a little confusing when an inmate is still making the transition from male to female or vice versa. Decisions about where to place transgender inmates are made on a case-by-case -case basis, Wilson said. If they still have male genitalia, they're still going to be placed with the male population, Wilson said, adding, you definitely don't want to be housing somebody with male genitalia in a female population even though they may feel that way. Two questions that I've been asked the most over the last 10 years that I've lived in my preferred gender are if gender dysphoria does not completely go away even after transition, why bother? And does dysphoria get easier to manage? Speaking from my own experience, yes. I've found that it has gotten easier for me to manage as I get further along my transition and move towards achieving my goals. When I began my transition I was in prison in 2013. That's the year I pursued therapy and testing to get the results the medical professionals needed to draw a conclusion for the initial diagnosis, then fighting the DOC to prescribe hormones. I know without a doubt what I need to do in order to keep myself safe because turning back to alcohol and drugs are not an option for me but I also know how temptation can affect me if I'm not careful and I just have to endure the distress, emotional turmoil and anguish. Not do things like look at myself in mirrors or without filters in pictures or videos I enjoy making, having my laser treatments and lip fillers done, and whatever else it takes for me right now to try not to think about the heightened sense of dysphoria whenever it begins to creep in when I'm triggered because it does and will. In a perfect world, transition would be painless, inexpensive and it'd be possible to make all of the sources of dysphoria go away, but in our less than perfect world, money, time, the limits of surgery, and even the people and paperwork we interact with mean that there's still things left over that cause dysphoria even after you're done with transitioning. But that's still a vast improvement on your whole life being a perpetual trigger for dysphoria. It's worth it, she said. <laughs>
guys for watching this video.